Today on Let's Fish TV, I have a very special episode for you. We're gonna be finesse fishing in the middle of summer. You know, it's been super hot this summer, 100, 105 degree temps, and sometimes that can lead for a tough day on the water. But I got a couple little tricks I can't wait to show you. Today is gonna be one that you wanna record or take some notes on. Let's Fish TV is on the air right now. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh. Check that out. It's time for the only program that brings you real-time fishing reports from the Southwest region every week. Cobia! Big one. And a monster! Look Beautiful. at that! That's a Tawakini giant. This is Let's Fish. Welcome to Let's Fish TV. I'm your host, Andrew Upshaw. And today, we are on Toledo Bend. But it's not necessarily where we're at, but what we are doing. It is the middle of summer, 100 to 105 degree temps in the middle of the day. Fishing is pretty tough right now. I'm gonna show you how to finesse these fish and still catch a big bag of bass. We'll also have this week's fishing report from your local region from our insider reporters. In the meantime, I'm gonna get this Bass Cat Mercury launch, get everything set up from we'll Tossa Bags Studio for your weekend planner. Hi everybody, these Salooner tables are showing good fishing conditions both days this weekend. Peak morning activity will start at 4.56 on Saturday and 5.32 early Sunday morning. Prime daytime action picks up around 5.21 on Saturday and 5.57 late Sunday afternoon. Depending on your local area, expect the sun to rise around 6.28 and set around 8.40. Evenings will feature a moon that is 68% visible. Make sure to stay right here to check out all of the current fishing reports from throughout the area. Plus, I'll return with Bassmaster Elite Angler Bradley Hallman to answer this week's Ask the Pro question. All right, guys, today's episode is going to be really special. I'm going to take you out on the lake and I'm going to show you how to catch summertime bass when there's a high pressure system. You know, it's a calmer day today, middle of the summer. The fish have been out there for quite some time. And you know, sometimes that makes fishing kind of difficult. But today I'm gonna break you down a couple of my favorite finesse fishing tactics to catch summertime bass. Today's episode, you're not gonna wanna miss. Let me get out there and see what we can do. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, man, when he thumped it, I knew right then and there that was gonna be a pretty good bass. He is too. Man, oh man. It's nothing like finesse fishing in the summertime. Ooh, here we go. Check that out, guys. Nice bass on a drop shot. We're going to be talking about finesse fishing. Middle of summer, it kind of gets a little tough sometimes. And we're going to be talking about how you approach this, how you catch these fish this time of year. The fishing's starting to heat up. The sun's starting to heat up. I think we're supposed to have 100 to 105 degree temps today. But we're going to show you how to catch these nice bass. Let's get this fish back real quick, and we'll talk a little bit about how to finesse fish and what exactly we're doing today on today's episode. So, you know, we're out here today to teach you something. I, I really wanted to make today's episode just about teaching. I, I wanted it to be about midsummer, hottest days of the year. I mean, we're literally dealing right now in Texas, Louisiana with 100, 102, 103 degree temperatures. And it makes for pretty tough fishing sometimes. And that's when finesse fishing rigs come into play. Now, could you come out here and crank? Yes. Could you come out here and throw a big worm? Absolutely, and catch some bass. But for numbers, sheer numbers, and sometimes giants, finesse fishing, namely with a drop shot and a shaky head, can be some of the most fun fishing that you do the entire season. You know, one thing that you have to use is good electronics. You know, we're using Lowrance Electronics, the new HDS Pros, and using Active Target too. And in this situation, I was kind of going around, graphing around, and I found this school of bass. And this is a a really unique place it is it's a really nice point i found it using my c-map and the one cool thing it had it had one little kicker point and that's where the school was actually sitting on it it had one real big point and one little kicker off the side 
as soon as I dropped my troll motor, I saw those fish drop the drop shot down there, but it's all about technique. So we're gonna talk about that in today's episode. We're gonna break down the technique, show you exactly how to shake your worm to increase your catch ratio in the middle of summer. So let's get back to it. I got a nice school bass. We'll see what we can do here in just a second. Hi everybody and welcome to this week's Lone Star Lakes brought to you by Athlon Optics. Premier optics, an affordable price and a lifetime warranty. What more? could a person ask for. Now this week we're gonna go night fishing and we're gonna do it at Lake Texoma. All you have to remember are four baits in one location. The bluffs along the Eisenhower Bank, both sides of the state park, is where you're gonna fish. What are you gonna fish? Start with a buzz bait. You'll fish that from three to about five feet. Then your big Colorado spinner bait, you'll fish that from four to about six feet. You can also use a medium diving crankbait and wrap it all up with a big 10 or 15 inch worm on a Texas rig. All the colors, black, blue, that's what matters. That's how you're gonna catch your bass at night. Also be aware, you may catch a giant striper too, so be ready for that. Over at uh, Lake Fork, well known for bass fishing. Yeah, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go sand bass fishing. Go out to the big humps, the horseshoe area, all the main areas that are on your maps. You'll see the humps when you look at your graphs or if you still have them, those old paper maps. Go out and fish those main lake humps. You'll see the fish schooling, so be ready with a top water like a tiny torpedo in a clear, but also have a small swim bait, half ounce jig head with a four, four inch bait, and you'll be able to catch those Lake Fork Sandies. That's Lone Star Lakes. Check us out on Facebook, Lone Star Lakes. You gotta really trick them into biting. Uh, they don't really wanna bite, they're lethargic, they're just kinda sitting down there, just kinda coming off the spawn and recouping a little bit, especially in this heat. It just really changes the way they bite a lot of times. So you can see, I got one on right now. There we go. Not a bad little fish there. Golly, man, they, when you get them all fired up like that, it is fun to do. But right there was a perfect example of what you have to do. You know, right there, I saw those fish. I saw how they were reacting and they weren't. You know, they were just kind of sitting down there. And as soon as I reeled that drop shot up past them, I saw the fish, I saw two or three of them react. And I knew at that point I probably had them. So I reeled in and flipped right back to the same spot. As soon as it got down the bottom, the fish ate it. Not a big fish, but this time of year, you got to pay attention to those little bitty clues that you have. But the drop shot is so unique because you can do so many things with it. You know, we're actually fishing it Texas rigged on there. And what I mean by that is, you know, a lot of times you see like up north on smallmouth lakes, they'll nose hook it a little bit. Uh, but here where I'm at today, there's a lot of timber around, a lot of brush, and you need to have that worm rigged, Texas rigged, more weedless. And we're using a brand new worm today. This is a worm that I've gotten to play with all year long, and it's the Strike King Filler Worm. The Strike King Filler Worm is a six inch worm, and it is deadly on a drop shot. So I'm gonna get re-rigged. I'm gonna get back out there, hopefully catch a couple more nice bass. The school's fired up. Hope y'all stay tuned and see what happens next. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Have fun out there. Visit Mississippi. Wanderers welcome. Powerful. Total boat control. Balls out. Made in the USA. Heavy duty mounts for your fish finders. Rely on. Challenge your limits. There he is. Oh, he's running to the top. Oh, there we go. There he is. Oh, he's running to the top. Oh, there we go. Golly, they, man, he's acting like a dang smallmouth, jumping around like that. There we go, another nice bass on the drop shot. I picked up the shaky head trying to see if they were more on the bottom, but it really seems like they want that drop shot today. Another nice bass. You know, let's talk about this drop shot though. This thing is pretty unique. You know, today we're, we're finesse fishing midsummer 
bass and this is the actual filler worm this is a brand new worm uh, from strike king it comes in a ton of different colors but you know today i'm keeping it pretty basic i'm throwing red bug and that is just the mainstay in my boat this time of year you know whether it be morning dawn red bug june bug i keep it pretty basic but red bug this time of year out deep summertime ledges always tends to work but let's rig this thing up you know this one just got used so it's not a fresh one but i'm going to show you how to rig this thing so basically you take this worm just like this i'm gonna bite a little bit off the head you go in using a straight shank hook this is just an owner one alt cover shot hook and you rig it just like that so this is the weedless version of the drop shot quarter ounce weight and this is what's going to surprise most of you is this is actually 15 pound line this isn't light line this isn't 8 10 something like that 15 pound test and some people are gonna be like well why wouldn't you just throw it on a bait casting rod or why would you even throw a drop shot if you're throwing 15 but in the reality is when you are drop shotting around heavy cover yes you will get more bites on lighter line that is a hundred percent proven fact if i went to eight pounds six pounds something like that i would a hundred percent get more bites but your land catch to land ratio especially in this deep timber will reduce dramatically and one thing i've learned through the history of fishing timber locations like this one if you fish around that timber you're going to break off if you use light line especially if you hook that fish of a lifetime and and there's a lot of really great places like this you know whether it be sam rayburn salita bend lake fork uh just to name a few in texas where you have that chance to hook a giant so you don't want to be out here fishing for fit you know for bass and and hook that fish of a lifetime with a six pound test around timber you will lose that fight almost every single time so upsize that line i'm going from braid to fluorocarbon 10 pound braid still but that 15 pound uh contra fluorocarbon is the line of choice in this situation but get you some of these filler worms guys i'm telling you they're softer they're going to tear up a little bit easier than maybe some of the more traditional finesse worms that you've used but i'm telling you right now your hookup ratio is through the roof with that softer worm and it just it just dances out there it dances out there guys and it catches those bass so i'm gonna get back out there and see if i can catch another one hey friends captain kevin bruce are here with this week's let's fish outdoor report tell you what sorry y'all missed me last week i got tied up and i couldn't do the report but we're in the basically the dog days of summer right now we're going to talk both fresh and salt water salt water scene early and late seems to be the best i tell you what if you know where some lights are at night right now lots of trout and some redfish getting caught under the lights other than that i suggest fishing early and late super hot uh live shrimp under a popping cork two to three feet for your trout deeper reefs for sure trout are on the ledges of the channel some redfish at the gulf jetties when the water's clear enough there are some redfish in the marsh but i'll tell you what they're getting really hard to catch because it's just getting so hot that time of the year offshore fishing right now out of venice i've seen a couple good reports still a few tuna getting caught lots of boats though from calcasieu all the way down there they're going out catching snapper remember snapper season's open check your limits your daily possession per person everything and go get in on some of that action when the weather allows on the freshwater side of scene pretty much same story it's you know nighttime if you're bass fishing all your bigger lakes to lead a bend Caddo, Vernon, Caney Lake, fish your deeper points, your humps, your ridges, big worms, work them slow on the bottom. They're catching lots of good bass. If you catch a trophy, take a picture, let it go. Tell you what, the white perch action, the same thing though. Daytime action, but fish deep. Fish 25, 30 feet over some brush piles. Look for some old lay down logs. With that down imaging, you'll see them old lay down logs and those fish will be all clustered around it. Light tube jigs and live shiners seems to be the best there. For old Cajun Phil, this is Captain Kevin Broussard saying, let's fish. We're going to see you next week right here in Hackberry, Louisiana at Cajun Paradise Charter. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Lose, Feel the Difference, Mamba Boats, Ride with Pride, Strike King, Taiwan On, Fishing Specialties, makers of the premier mount assembly for live sonar. Ooh, there we go. There we go, guys. Check that out.
Oh, that's a good one. That is a really good one there, guys. Oh, my goodness. I might actually have to get down and grab this one. Oh, there we go. There we go, guys. Check that out. Holy cow. That's a nice one there. God, I had him stuck good, too. Man, oh, man. There we go. Man, what a nice bass. Told you we'd catch us a good one today. That's a that's a dang good one right there. On the drop shot, just goes to show you, you just got to just keep kind of rotating through some of these places. I mean, that's a good solid, almost five pounder, four and a half, four and three quarter pounder using that filler worm. My goodness, let's get this fish back. One of the most important things is to pay attention. You know, just because you've caught them in a place before doesn't mean that's where the fish are always gonna be. And that's where your electronics really come into play. You know, in this particular place where I'm fishing, I've caught fish in and around this general area for years. But the unique thing is almost every single time I fish this area, I catch them in a different spot. That's where your electronics, the Lowrance side imaging is second to none. I mean, I can sit here, I can go over places, use my down scan, find where these fish are located and not really rely so much on history. I know the history of the spot, you know, this, this whole area has got a big group of fish around it, but finding those little bitty places that change all the time is so important and coming in around with those electronics, finding those sweet spots, dropping your, your Tour Pro in the water and using that active target. You know, I can't stress active target to enough the importance of using it and seeing how the fish are relating. Are they on the bottom? Are they swimming up eating bait? Are they sitting on two or three stumps? You know, whatever it may be. Today, they're kind of rotating. It's fun to watch them because you can kind of see how the fish rotate around. You know, right now they're rotating between a really short stump on the bottom and a really tall tree. And they're just kind of swimming back and forth up and down this ledge. And that's where I'm picking them off with this drop shot. What's up guys, Captain Taylor Burrell here with Wave Dancing Charters for this week's Fishing Report. Well today we're out here in the Gulf of Mexico. We just got our limit of nice red snapper. Uh, earlier this morning we stopped trying to catch some kingfish. Didn't have any luck, saw a couple other boats. Not having any luck either, but we're gonna head back try it some more. Um, here a few days ago, the king fishing was really good. We caught a few cobias as well. A few mahi's been showing up offshore. Uh, now inshore, speckled trout fishing's been getting a little bit better once the winds calm down some and the water clarity's coming back. Uh, Bunch of big sharks, big hammerheads, uh, three tigers were caught, so caught this week at the jetties. Uh, but that's all I have for this week. Now remember guys, if you want to come out here fishing in Galveston, Texas, look us up, Wave Danger Charters. Y'all have a good one. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's a, I think it's a big spot of bass. That's a large mouth. There we go. There we go, guys. And that is how you catch finesse fish in the middle of summer right there. What a good bass that is. Pulled up to this spot, graphed it, saw a couple nice ones, caught a good one. But today what we really have focused on is finesse fishing in the middle of summer. You know, a lot of times we get so caught up on throwing big baits, whether it's a big jig, a big shaky head, Carolina rigs, big crankbaits, all those things. But a lot, more times than not, especially in the middle of summer, you have to downsize, you have to change your bait up, change your presentation, and this will help you put more fish in the boat. You know, I've gone over today a bunch of different things, whether it be your retrieve, uh, the baits that you need to use, things like that. But it's so, so important to find the right rod whenever you're out there fishing a drop shot. And today I'm using a 610. This is a medium, extra fast, loose signature series rod. This is the rod I use when I'm Texas rigging my drop shot. And it's really important to have that right rod and a good reel. This is a custom light. This is a brand new reel by Luz. 
But overall, today has been a lot of fun. We've caught a lot of good fish and hopefully proven to you that it is so possible to go out on these big bass fisheries and catch them finesse fishing, throwing drop shots, throwing shaky heads. Middle of summer, don't be afraid to pick up that spinning rod, catch you some extra bass. I mean, today we've probably had 17, around 17 pounds. It's been a really good day. It's starting to get hot though, guys, and I think I'm gonna start heading in here in just a minute, but we'll catch you here in just a minute. We'll talk about exactly what we did today and how we caught them finesse fishing in the middle of summer. Watch our latest episode or catch up on past episodes on our website at letsfishtv.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter for new fishing videos every day. And download the free Waypoint TV app to get all the latest episodes every week on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Mercury, Go Boldly, Lorance, the ultimate fishing system, Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama. Plan or book your fishing charter at orangebeach.com. Motor Guides Tour Pro with GPS Anchor, powered by passion. Glacier Outdoor, outdoors since 1982. Welcome back everyone. Let's get right over to your Ask a Pro question for this week. Weston would like to know, what are some of your goals this year? For an answer, we asked Bassmaster Elite Angler Bradley Hallman. I primarily got two goals. Um, one is to try to win a freaking blue trophy before the season is over. Uh, we only have nine events. We have nine shots of that. Two of them are gone, so I only have seven left. And I would say goal number one is to make sure that I qualify for the Bassmaster Classic uh, going into 2024. So those would be my primarily two main goals. The Classic one's even become bigger now that they've announced the Classic next year will be at Grand Lake, which is my home lake in Oklahoma. So I'm a goal-oriented person. Those are pretty much my goals for uh, 2023 season. Thanks so much, Bradley. If you have a question as well and you want some help from one of our pros, all you have to do is go to letsfishtv.com and follow that Ask the Pro link to submit a question. Here's today's Right Stuff, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Today's episode was a lot of fun. Caught a lot of fish today. I mean, way more than you physically saw on the show. And we caught them on one bait. We kept one rod in our hand, and that was a drop shot. We oversized the line, put that 15 pound Strike King Contra fluorocarbon to a 10 pound Contra braid. But I'm gonna tell you, the breadwinner today was the worm. You know, the worm is so, so important. This is a red bug Strike King filler worm. It's a brand new worm from Strike King. They make a bunch of different colors. And when I dig through my box, I mean, I can think of so many ones I really like. Sexy Shad is one. They make a June bug, which is another top color. And they make the ever popular morning dawn you know when it comes to colors i keep a couple of different options just in case but when i'm fishing deep summertime and the water's off stained a little bit that's when i'm going to red bug the cleaner the water the more natural whether it be the morning dawn or even magic which is another color with like a, a watermelon brown bottom but finding the right color is sometimes the most important and the hardest part. That's why I have a whole box full of a bunch of different colors that I can cycle through on any given day to help me catch bass. Today they wanted one, but tomorrow they might want a different one. Guys, I hope you learned how to find and catch them in the middle of summer, these 105 degree days. And until next time, I'll see you on the water.